Elias. Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us for AMA number two for the Dark Horse Project. My name is Adrian, aka TDH Fubu. I'm your host with the most this evening. My colleague and your friendly Discord neighbor, Brogan, is here too, uh, and will be moderating, passing me questions from Discord and socials, checking who's been naughty and nice. So make sure you keep those cues coming along, those questions coming along, and we'll try to get through them as many of them tonight. So today, tonight, wherever you are, we have the pleasure of bringing back on stage our star, Bianca. For those who don't know, Bianca is a 17-year-old racing driver from Laguna, Philippines, and currently racing in W Series Academy team for both this season and next season in 2023. She scored her first points on her debut race in Miami, but, you know, you really should be knowing all this already. So if you don't, get your learn on, okay? So now, <laughs> joining Bianca by popular demand, because you asked for it, is Bianca's <laughs> manager, Daryl O'Young. Daryl wears a few hats. First off, he's a multiple race and championship winning driver who's raced, uh, who started racing when he was eight years old. He's director of Craft Bamboo Racing, which is an official Mercedes AMG performance team. And for those of you who have watched the Bathurst 12 hour race a few weeks ago, we actually did pretty good. We crossed the line in P2, so uh, a great result after an eventful uh, weekend. So besides all this, and he hates it when I call him that, uh, he's my boss. He's the director of CBR Media, and we are a motorsport-focused marketing and management agency. So as with our previous AMA, we've got a bunch of questions ready uh, submitted by our members uh, through Discord. So uh, we'll get to that, along with some of my very own, uh, some of my uh, uh, sort of burning questions for both Bianca and Daryl as well. The Brogues will be uh, monitoring some of the live questions coming in, and so we'll try our best to answer them uh, if we have time but if if not we can definitely get Bianca to answer them on Discord at a later date or we could save that for our next little gathering. Um, I also want to make sure we leave some time because we've got some special news that Daryl is going to share with us. Pretty important stuff actually so uh, all this stuff is happening on the Dark Horse so be sure to stay on until the very end. So delay no more and let's get this started. First of all hello Bianca and Daryl thanks for being here. Hello. Hi. Happy to be back again. <laughs> yeah. So, Bianca, I'm going to first start with you. Um, how are you doing? Uh, what have you been doing lately? Doing all right. You know, pretty, pretty happy with the Barcelona whole experience the whole weekend. You know, got back home here. And thankfully, I mean, I'm, I'm at the track again for the Indy 500. So that's an amazing experience that I'm going through, especially that it's my very first one. Um, yesterday, I got to go to a track and um, enjoy the Carb Day, which is a really, really fun event for the Indy 500, where a lot of people come and see the, the drivers, where they can get up, um, they can get up close in the paddock, in the pits, and you really just see all the drivers. And it's amazing how fast they go. I mean, yesterday we experienced some of red flags and crashes, uh, very, very unfortunate, but they're all safe, thankfully. And, you know, we continued to enjoy the party. There was concerts, there was the pit stop challenge and a lot of cool things that I'm experiencing. So I'm having a blast. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I'm going to start off with a couple of questions that we didn't get uh, to answer last from our last AMA. So one of the things that uh, uh, one of our members asked was um, maybe just give us your high and low moments from the Miami weekend. Yeah, the Miami weekend was definitely a roller coaster because we came into it thinking that, you know, we were going to be like ten, like three, four seconds off the pace purely because it was going to be a street race, you know. And that being my first ever Palmer F3 race was definitely not what we hoped for, but it is what it is. Um, we came there with very, very optimistic. We worked very hard to prepare prior to it. We did you notes know, and we did a track walk. We made sure to be very crit critical of every data, of every information that we received. And that translated to apparently a very, very good weekend. You know, my first ever race, I... I was um, P9, I was in the points, so, um, I, you know, like, having my first race and scoring points is definitely cloud nine for me, but, you know, after some highs, there will be some lows, and that's just how it is, so, but, you know, um, one of the very lows was just for race two, we just didn't have the pace, um, 
maybe because I was trying to get tired or because the track was a bit more technical to drive because of the F1 um, F1 rubber laid down, you know, it, you start to push more of the car and then you, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't deliver. And that is something that I will learn from and we're improving on that, you know, we're learning from that and we're progressing every single weekend and that's the best thing, you know, and, and yeah, Barcelona was, was better, pace was better, more consistency and that was definitely one of the things that we lacked uh, in Miami was my consistency, you know, I could hit fast laps but consistently I couldn't, I was about eight tenths to two tenths faster or slower than my fast lap and it's not it's not what we 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 like and so we work on it and yeah and and so you mentioned about the spanish grand prix now with the panda gate the panda gate uh issue is that a high low moment or a low moment for you i'm sorry the the panda noises that you made was that a high moment or a low moment for you <laughs> I don't know. I mean, everyone seems to love it. You know, they made some very, very funny edits of it, and I still watch it every day just because it makes me smile. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting that actually, because um, they they gave us lots of challenges, and apparently I get to have the animal noise, and I wasn't expecting that. That's why when they asked me what was my favorite animal, I said. Panda, because I do love pandas. But if I knew that they were going to ask me to make the noise, I would have said dog or a cat to <laughs> save myself. But I couldn't. So, so yeah, that's pretty, yeah. pretty funny. A bit of a hug. Yeah, and Daryl, what's your favorite animal? Uh, <laughs> animals, <laughs> animals is for Bianca. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, uh, the dark horse. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll save you from making. We'll save you from making horse noises and stuff. But uh, let me let me ask you this, uh, Daryl. Um, you know, so I mentioned earlier you started racing when you're eight, right? So I've always wanted to ask, and I've always been genuinely curious. Is it true that the younger you start, the better you are as a driver? Um, I wouldn't say the younger, but you have to start young. So I wouldn't say like it, it makes a huge difference if you start at three or if you start at six or eight. Like I think somewhere along those lines these days i guess with the whole age shift going younger um the drivers like when i was racing uh formula cars you know 16 was really young like now it's kind of like like average uh, kind of starting point it was more like you know drivers were moving up to formula three when they're like in their 20s uh not so much like 17 18 19 now so i guess it's been a big transition for bianca jumping from formula three from karting to formula three it's never easy to make that big leap um but i'd say that just just getting uh, an early start is a does make a big difference like any sport now because the more hours you log in uh the more the better and if you start in karting um it's a lot cheaper i would say compared to formula cars so you're able to do a lot more driving and a lot more racing gain experience so i would say that's a that's generally why most drivers you know before they have a license they're already racing in um uh they're already racing uh, carts Okay, now that we've got both of you guys here, um, maybe I think the obvious question was, how do you guys remember that first meeting of yours? Maybe we could start with Daryl, because uh, yeah, yeah. we've we kind of, yeah. So a long time ago, like we, um, uh, you know, I was helping start up a, in China a karting uh, scholarship program, uh, and they actually invited Bianca to go race. Um, so that's where I kind of met her. She was, I think, 11 or 12 or 13 somewhere in that range i think about 11 so yeah I, I saw her drive for the first time and actually she won the race so it was pretty cool and she i just like noticed that oh there's this girl driver out there beating the boys so that was kind of cool and just seeing um someone from asia come in and, and drive at that level so that was yeah I, it left left an impression for sure um because it's not often we get to go see karting races i guess when we race in the professional uh, kind of circuits it's hard to come back and see karting so that was an interesting uh, opportunity to meet her and see her and actually just from there I started following her socials and just keeping in touch with her. Right. Bianca your your first memories of, of chatting with Daryl for the first time when, when he introduced himself when you guys got introduced? The first thing that I remember when I when I like when I think about that moment was when Daryl showed me 
this um lightning mcqueen car that they had <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they were racing that weekend i think as well uh at the big big track so that's the like that's the main thing that i remembered from from that moment you know he showed me the car and i was like ah, i'm a yeah. huge like car <laughs> we had the we had, a, so we had a pro <laughs> prototype car uh yeah. branded branded with lightning mcqueen doing the disney car oh, no, the movie so that was yeah something she remembers i guess <laughs> and then I remember chatting with, with Daryl and just talking about karting and then what it's like to, you know, in cars and the differences. And I just remember telling him, tell, I remember him telling me to, you know, keep on pushing. You know, karting is a very early stage in my career. So it's like where you make the most experience and you enjoy, have fun, because when you start to get to the professional level, the fun becomes less and the stress becomes more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and um, and actually from like that moment on, we never really had any communication like for about five years, I, like not even like chats or anything, but we were like mutuals on social media and everything. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so um, those are some of my questions. I'll, I'll, I'll pepper them like throughout the, uh, the, the AMA, but uh, maybe we could throw to a fan question right now. And this is for Bianca. Hellcracked asks, what is your favorite track? Your favorite track that you've driven in before and the one that you'd love to try one day? Uh, well, that's funny because I haven't driven to a lot of tracks. <laughs> I mean, I've only driven to two in the V series and two in, um, in USF juniors, but I would say Miami because it is actually a really, really good track. You know, it's filled with such high speed corners and, and then there's the chicane and then there's that last sector where it's a long straight and heartbreaking. And that um that that corner, um the long the back long straight and then the, the left hander was actually really, really technical just because um once you start to push wide, there's just no coming back from it, you know. Um that's I think that's um that's where most drivers even touch the wall so, so close to, on the exit because it, it's really hard to control. And even with just a throttle, when you go full throttle, the rear starts sliding and then it pushes you out. And then it's just crazy technical. Yeah. But uh, but if there is one that I would love to try one day, I think everyone knows this, but my favorite track is Monza. And I was really, really sad that we don't get to race in Monza. And I really do hope that we get to one day. Well, maybe we could do some Discord, uh, Discord related racing competitions on online or something <laughs> like that. Um, a Filipino fan also asked, and and and, uh, do you think that uh, a podium this year is realistic for you? I mean, as a driver, I always, you know, I always aim for that podium every single race, uh, even though I know it's. Still Bianca, a bit the answer better be yes. The answer better be yes. <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. Yes. Just because I'm being held gunpoint, but yes, <laughs> I'm kidding. We're okay oh, with short and concise I... answers. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am aiming for that. I want that national anthem played. <laughs> I think that would be pretty I was, cool. I wasn't making a pressure into. I was just joking, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, another question is, uh, Kenny G has asked, um, what other type of motorsport categories would you like to try besides formula, right? As, as we know, you just, you just made that transition from karting directly into a formula car. Are there any other things that you want to try? Any other cars that you want to try? For sure, I'd love to try an LMP2 one day. Uh, those are just amazing. It looks amazing. And I'm, you know, I've had lots of friends that has driven and raced LMP2s and they say it's really, really good. So yeah. I, I do hope that I get to try that one day. And of course, I'd like to try um, Ovals, uh, IndyCar, Indy 500. So that's definitely also a goal of mine to experience it one day because like yesterday when I saw them drive so, so fast and then it's like always at the limit. And I, I want to try that one day. Nice. And actually, just on that point, Daryl, you know, like I, I know that you've been racing a lot of uh, you, you've definitely, you know, you've done formula cars. And, and I think, you know, I think we most know you as, as you know, on an all conquering race conquering sort of GT driver, um, just in terms of, you know, the driving techniques involved and, and, and what to look out for. Is there a difference between driving an open wheel car versus a GT car? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, obviously, the GT cars are much heavier. 
so they're much bigger cars. Um, so it's, it's very different from formula. Formulas are just much more agile. So uh, it's, it is actually more similar to karting style uh, when you move to cars, but of course there's still gonna be difference from carts to cars. But in general, like, um, you know, even for like, for Bianca's path, we've been focusing a lot on formula. It's, it's actually like, you know, you, you go, when you're trying to go for formula one, you have to stay on that route. Um, it's best not to stray and start doing GT and doing touring car. Cause they are, it's very, it is a big mix. So as a young driver, you wanna kind of focus on uh, one thing and kind of concentrate on that path and you can always change path later um you know at you know being 17 she's you know she, even if she went to gt at 23 24 or 25 it's quite young so i think um the key is that you know you, you make the push and try to go for formula um, formula one and that concentration is like full-on right now so everything we're doing uh, learning about aerodynamics, learning about, um, you know, her driving style. And, and she has so much to learn. She's only done four races. So, um, you know, and with W Series, it's very limited with um, track time. You basically have 30 minutes practice and then qualifying. And I think many people don't understand how hard that is. It's super difficult. Um, so I guess um, that's, the, that's the tough thing we're racing with Formula One. Um, it's very limited track time for, for Bianca to practice. So she's kind of learning in the spotlight. <laughs> that makes mm. sense but at least the, yeah. the best part she has a scholarship she has a two-year scholarship as a, so she has a uh, time to learn and absorb and we're trying to get her more track time and that's part of what the dark horse is about is getting her um extra funding to train and practice which is what exactly what she needs yeah and maybe some things that you guys can talk about like my next question really like yeah, maybe you guys can provide some some comments on this you know what is that transition from karting to formula cars like what are some of the things i guess that bianca you yourself are particularly prioritizing on on how to get better is it tire management is it is it your start is it about general management of the entire race and and maybe just daryl some some comments uh, from a from a more sort of a, a manager side like you know how you see it from from the outside as you're watching uh, Bianca race on on TV. Uh, maybe start with Bianca. For me, it was just like driving itself, actually. You know, um, because the Formula Cars has you know the the front and rear wing. They've got the aerodynamics. They've got the downforce. It took a took a while to trust the car. And also, apart aside from that, it was the braking for me. I I, I have um, a bit of a troubles with braking. You know, my peak pressure. It, I I don't get it high enough, or I don't hit the brakes hard enough. I don't stomp on it, and those are like the key bits of like trying to rotate the car. Like for me now, the my main area to work on is my patience. I'm not patient enough with the throttle, like mid corner, I tend to dab on a throttle, which stops the rotation of the car and pushes it forward. So that's one of the bits that I'm trying to understand rotation and the pitch of the car, you know, weight transfer. And that's the sort of things that you don't experience in a go kart. Like, you know, sitting in a go kart, your, your, um, your weight is very centered because you're like the heaviest thing on the car. And so it doesn't, the only way you can transfer weight is by using body language and leaning it, leaning into the corner. But aside from that, you don't really get to experience or feel as you brake and then the car leans forward and then, you know, the pitch goes like this. You don't experience that in karting. And, and, and coming from karting to formula cars and experiencing that, it's definitely a big change, you know, and your mind's a bit confused why it's going through all that and then having to understand and learn it. It's definitely lots of um, information. Sometimes there's even moments where I feel like I'm just, you know, I'm just learning so much at the moment, like too, ma too many things I'm trying to understand. And then I just get confused and, but, but yeah, it's a whole process. You know, you don't learn it in a day. You don't become Lewis Hamilton in one day. That's for sure. It takes years and years of experience, you know, driving different cars. That's where you gather all the experience you can get, you know, from F4, F3, or if you get the opportunity to drive in LMP2 or, or DPI, the, the, you know, that's, it's, yeah, but it's progress. <laughs> Nice. And then Daryl, obviously you you've not only actually actually raced, but you you've also managed races, right? Like so from your perspective, like as you're watching Bianca do the Miami race and the a Spanish Grand Prix, like what are some of your thoughts that are going in your head um, as you're looking at her performance and pace? 
Well, I think uh, the most important thing is actually just to understand the real scenario. I think um, even for Bianca, we talk with her a lot about it. Like, you know, because, you know, at first I think she could be quite down not being on the pace, you know, because she's used to being at the front <laughs> when racing at the front. And um, being in a situation where she is, she's not only a rookie, but the only driver on the grid to come from karting. So that, that, that has a real big impact. So I like, as she just said right now, she's got so much like going on. She's just trying to figure it all out in 30 minutes, you know, and there's things that she talked about right now as her focus points, but there's about 10 things that we haven't even started teaching. <laughs> so there's like things that just is just not experiencing because you have to focus in on priorities and then work its way up. Um, uh, that's how, that's generally how it works. So from the outside, I think uh, we're, we're giving her lots of positive reinforcement. We're like focusing on the good things. Uh, of course, we're teaching her all the things that she's doing wrong, but it's 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 keeping that, I guess, perspective that we are here to learn this year. Um, and I think often, like you know, from the outside, it might look like, oh, why is Bianca not winning? You know, like you know, against mm -hmm. Jamie Chadwick, who has like you know eight years' experience racing Formula cars or different cars, um, at least. So these kinds of things, is, it's it's a big it's a big difference. But I think that's that's the main main thing I'm trying to you know remind. Uh, her sponsors or her parents or myself <laughs> you know like even myself was like why are we not faster you know but at, at the end of the day it's like it's her fourth race you know and, and that we're doing everything we can to give her that opportunity uh, you know eight months ago she, she was thinking about stopping racing you know she was you know when we talked about it it was like she's like I'm gonna stop, maybe stop racing because I just can't I can't take it any further and that's kind of where we jumped in to try to help so, you know, everything we're doing is just trying to give her that chance. And, um, and we, we've, you know, we've seen how much support she's had from uh, all sorts of, you know, fans from everywhere in the Philippines, um, in the US, um, just all over the world. Like she's getting so much support. And that's, that's amazing to see a young driver get that. And I think that's where Bianca feels that energy. So the more people that can support her, give her that chance. Um, and I think, you know, we work with Bianca because she has that work ethic. You know, she wants to, she wants it. Uh, she'll she'll do everything she can to get it and um, that's yeah. that's what that's all we ask for so from our side we just give her the space to work and develop and gain strength and all sorts of things that's fun um yeah i've, I've definitely seen a lot of uh, nice interactions between uh, our discord members and, and bianca and, and you as well so let me bring this back to uh, our next question, which is a combined one from Dune and uh, MTC. So shout out to you two. Uh, and they ask, uh, Bianca, what is your diet like these days, especially after a grueling training session? And also how you pre prepare yourself mentally for all that stress and pressure, not, not racing, but even just with training and practicing. What is, why, you know, like what's this constant drive to work out and why, why I guess, why you, you, you need to do all that stuff? So really funny, you know, um, I moved here, I'm based here now in Indianapolis, so I've got a room and a kitchen, but no food, so apparently I got to cook for myself now. So I went grocery shopping a few days back for the first time in my life. I, 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 I made Daryl stay up till 3 a.m. asking him what ingredients I need, what meats I need to get. And then, and then yesterday or two days ago, I cooked for the very first time, and I was sending picture of to Daryl. If is it cooked yet? Is it undercooked? Is it over? Am I burning it? And it's like those like those moments where, even outside of racing, I'm still learning. You know, it's like the learning doesn't stop. You know, and <laughs> as, a, as a 17 year old, there's a lot of things that I need to go through. Especially, I'm kind of like going through that transition from to adulthood. And there's a lot more responsibilities, especially like trying not to burn the house down. So, yeah, but but it's funny because racing makes me do a lot of things that I never thought I could or would do. Like it's like it's my reason. It, it, no, it, it's the reason why I wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. It's the reason why I work so hard in the gym. It's the reason why I do all these things. You know, I work so hard trying to balance school, racing, working out. And, and whenever I get, uh, I guess, demoralized or like just no motivation, I always think to myself that it's worth it because I love what I'm doing, even though I don't love the moments sometimes, you know, like 
pushing so hard at the gym where I'm like literally passing out. There's been moments like that where I'm just lit I'm just laying down in the ground, just thinking about life if I ever want this. Like there's even one time when I was um, in the Olympic training center, I messaged Daryl and told him I'm gonna walk out. Uh, I quit. <laughs> like I told him that just because of those little moments that like puts you off track because of just how hard things are, how hard training is, how hard life is, you know, and like social life and all that stuff. And, and there's been moments where I even told um, Adrian that I wanted to quit <laughs> because, because it was like too much pressure, too much stress, you know, and, but it's fun. I do it all for racing. Yeah, actually, we all know that, you know, you do, a, you post a lot of videos about you, you know, working out in the gym, and I do see, you know, your guns getting bigger and bigger. But <laughs> in terms of mental prep, right, like, you know, I, I've seen videos of you doing that, that, that sort of game where you touch all these lights. What else? Obviously, that's, that's for mental, uh, a physical and mental reaction, I suppose. But like, how do you how what are some of the things that are there specific exercises that you do to actually prepare yourself mentally? And, and what do you really prepare for mentally? You know, like, is it about calmness? Is it about, is it about, you know, yeah, being, being good under pressure and so forth? Yeah, so it's definitely all about mental preparation, to be honest. Like, when I was in karting, I never really trained for any, like, any mental or any, like, focus or reaction. And when I started doing it, that's when I realized how important it actually is. Like... In Miami, you know, when we go for a start, we line up on the grid and then there's the lights, you know. I've talked to some of the rookie drivers that I was um, racing with and they were saying that it was just so hard for them to focus when they were on the grid, you know, like to focus on the lights, everything's so quiet and they just, you start to panic, you start to overthink and you just lose focus and and I and I and I was like thinking to myself I never had that problem like for the start maybe that's why I even you know I I, ha I have really good starts because I was able to calm myself down and, and and slow down my breathing and just focus on the lights and and I was talking to them saying that it was just so hard for them to do that and they were asking like how do you do that and I was I didn't know I mean and, and then I started to realize it's it's because of all the mental training I, I was doing, you know, I was just working out my reaction. But aside from that, I've also been talking to a lot of um, a lot of sports psychologists to to help me do lots of breathing exercises to calm myself down or meditation and all that stuff. And it actually helps so, so much like. A, like a clear path to success is having a clear mind and I realize that now and I I'm doing my best to work on it even more because it helps so much when you're driving you know it helps you deal with stress to deal with you know obstacles put in your path and how to overcome it and you know make the right decisions in in, in tough moments so so yeah those are the trainings that I've been doing and I will continue doing it <laughs> S H uh, S J I one H T R. Um, just wondering if you could name a few people from W series uh, that you are particularly good friends with. Yeah, there's been a lot, you know. Like that's why I love W series because it's such a like family. Like yes, on track we're we're like kicking each other's ass, but like off track it's just a whole family and there's lots of good people there. You know, I think if there was a, I I think I I resonate a lot. with the rookie drivers because they're going through the same things that I'm going through you know like whenever we're like a second off the pace we just get so down you know we just think to ourselves why is Jamie so fast or well, why is Alice Powell or like Emma like so quick how are they so strong and we you know we I, I get to like share feelings with them and emotions and it makes the journey a lot easier having people that understands what you're going through so i'd say you know um there's of course my teammate juju um teresa and there's chloe there's um emily and then for like the the pros or you know i, I really look up to emma because she's she's such a mom she takes care of us rookies and she she like she, out like in barcelona i was riding with her in and out of the track just chatting and then you know she was giving me tips and advices and to keep on working, to keep on pushing, and always have a big smile on my face, like always. So that's always, always <laughs> happy. <laughs> right. 
And then just, I, I guess, uh, finally, um, uh, you know, we'll uh, just uh, in terms of uh, questions, let's see, at NAI, N-A-I-I, uh, asks, how are you enjoying living in Indy, Indianapolis? Uh, what are the differences from living in the Philippines? And how do you keep up with your schools and studies with all this action going on in your life? Indianapolis is a great, it's a, it's, it's a great city, you know, especially during the month of May, you know, there's like checkered flags every single corner I look at. And it's amazing, you know, like being in the heart of racing, the capital of racing. It's amazing. It feels like home, to be honest. Like whenever I came here to work out a pit fit, the original plan was like to only go for like three days, four days. And I told Daryl immediately that I was so in love with the place, you know, like it's, it's, I'm not gonna lie. There's nothing much to do. Like, it's really boring. It's not like a city, city life or whatever. It's not like, you know, San Francisco or LA, but there's just so much passion and so much racing and it inspires me every day, you know, working out a pit fit, working out with Indy 500 champs like Scott Dixon, Alexander Rossi, seeing them and, and, and just looking up to them. And it's, it's such a great feeling. And I guess that's the feeling that I've never sort of had in the Philippines because of the lack of racing in there, you know, like during the pandemic, like everything just stopped and my heart was like heartbroken. But, you know, I, I love Philippines. It is my home. It's it's home. It's where my family is. It's where all my friends are. And I miss them so much. I'm not going to lie. I can't wait to be back home there. And, you know, it's always fun whenever I'm home. It's, so so I, what do you like to do? What do you like to do when you're not racing? Actually, that's a, that's a also, sorry to interrupt, but that, that, that's a, a question from Min Lei. Um, what do you like to do when you're not racing? Um, Daryl says that I'm really, really boring. <laughs> I'm a boring person because I, I, I mean, I, I only go out if ever there's racing related, like, like, you know, the 500, I was, I was out yesterday watching the pit stop and everything. But whenever I have downtimes, I'm usually just at home or at my room, um, like reading or drawing, you know, I, I love architecture and it's something that I actually want to take and call it in university is architecture. You know, I draw floor plans, I draft and, and yeah, I, I usually on my free time, to be honest, all I do is work with Daryl and the whole craft band with like CBR media team or with the discord. I love to interact with them and share them stories, have a few banters, you know, like, I think it was yesterday that we had a watch party. We wa we watched Sonic, and I loved it. <laughs> I love Sonic so much. And but yeah, you know, um, I really wish though that I could have a pet to to make to complete to complete the home atmosphere. So I've been I've been um, whining to Daryl if I can get a pet, and I hope that I can get one. <laughs> you know, I try to I try to explain to her. <laughs> it doesn't work. Like, how do you take care of an animal when you're flying? So that's that's the funny stuff. Like I'm actually like teaching Bianca a lot of stuff in in racing because I guess like eight months ago she was just sitting at home, <laughs> so she had lots of time to draw and stuff and and think about animals and all sorts of stuff. But like honestly, the past five weeks I wouldn't even think that she had any like. We say, what do you do on your free time? She had zero free time. So yeah. between like flying and losing her passport and um, <laughs> traveling and racing and media and just it's just you know I, I get that life and I'm, I'm trying to explain to her a little bit like right now everything's just it's just going to be full focus on racing and that's this is the opportunity she has and I think she's been reacting and responding really well to it and just training but of course there's moments yeah for sure like like for anybody um in anything you do it's not just sport like you, you think what do you what am I doing like this is insane or you know there's so much like the checklist is like 30 things to do. Um, how do you keep up? So I guess, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of things, you know, but this is all part of and the I'm training. Very, yeah, and I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I appreciate, you know, Bianca trying to bring this pet issue uh, uh, out in the public now, you know, beyond Discord and into YouTube. So, so good job, but uh, not, not quite there. But let me throw this, to, like, <laughs> let me throw a couple of questions at Daryl because I know last time, Daryl, you know, during the AMA, we got Bianca and Ben to talk a little bit about NFTs, why they're into it. Maybe you could tell us, like, why you're excited about the Dark Horse project. Well, when we had this, the, uh, you know, we, of course, like, like any, sing, every single driver in this world, you know, we're always looking at ways that we can, um, I guess, um, you know, find sponsorship 
I think that's very, obviously that's the key for any driver. If you don't have sponsorship, you're not going racing. She was very fortunate to have the W Series uh, uh, program behind her now, but that does, it's not where it stops. You have to keep working at it and keep delivering. And actually, most importantly, is building that community around her. And, and that's where, when we came across Web3 uh, and blockchain, there was just, you know, because this is kind of like the project we're launching with the Dark Horse is like a little bit groundbreaking, I'd say. There's not many projects around uh, kind of an access pass behind young drivers. And it's about, it's about getting getting behind her early you know it's it's not it's not a, it's not a crazy expensive uh, kind of pass it's more about a, kind of like a crowd fund but with benefits you know because i think the, the idea is that there is opportunities for things being um you know as she, as she rises up the motorsport ladder this community stays the same uh, this community does not grow i mean like it does not get does not more and more access passes this is it and this is her her let's say it's, it's be a crew and be a crew is, you know, people that's going to grow with her on this journey. Um, you know, some people might dip in and out, but the point is that it's, it's, you know, following her on this journey because she's really at the beginning now. So yeah, it's a new idea. It's a new concept for sure. Uh, the team is dedicated to it, to bringing those like, uh, you know, exclusive rewards or benefits. Um, we have some pretty cool announcements coming at the end here, uh, but yeah. we're, we're going to talk about some of these like, uh, yeah, the fun benefits and things that come up but the point is it's not so much about like you know like it's not like it's a, it's a massive investment it's for people to get involved and support her and, and go on that journey with her um as she goes up and we're just trying to create that platform for her um it's up to kind of her to to interact um with with uh you know all the supporters and our team is going to work with um with that with her to come up with new ideas and what we can do to to make it fun so it's it's all about having fun and, and so far in, in discord we've been we've been testing it out prior to the the mint uh, the mint starts is on june 1st but um prior to the mint we've been playing around in discord and and um and seeing and learning and actually we're gonna probably bring in some guests to have talks and all sorts of things we want this community to be uh able to express themselves in motorsport or, or just you know day to day and just build this community where you know even in this past couple of weeks we got to know some of the the community members um, in the Discord, so it's been quite it's been quite fun, and um, we hope a lot more of her supporters will get behind it. Yeah, and and I know that uh, we uh, you've got an announcement to share, uh, some updates in terms of what's happening with the NFT. Do you want to? You know, I, we've got more questions coming in, but I, I'm keen to actually just cover this off because I think these are quite uh, important updates for for a lot of our members and, and the NFT holders right now. Yeah, I, th I think the first thing is obviously we moved the, the mint date to June 1st. That was something that um, I think as we saw the, in the last couple of weeks, things have been gaining a lot of momentum. A lot of people are getting behind it. Uh, a lot of people are asking us about the Dark Horse. And we've actually had um, you know, people in the, in the NFT space been really kind of supporting it. Like, like um, RSC has been, you know, the, the, the group at RSC has been very supportive um, with us uh, and helping us um, build our community as well and giving us a lot of tips on this. Um, but I think, uh, so that, like that, that led us to like, okay, let's move this mint back a bit because it's been growing and, and growing a lot the last couple of weeks. So that's been cool. And also I think, um, you know, with, with blockchain and, and crypto and things, there's been obviously the market's a bit down right now. Um, we still like, you know, these kind of things go up and down, but we believe in this technology. Um, it's not, it's not about, uh, I guess a lot of people get confused about NFTs being very like, you know, something that's very unknown, but I think it's just really um, uh, getting an access pass in. And I think because of the market being a bit soft right now, we decided we want everybody to have access and everybody to have opportunities. So we've merged the whitelists. Um, this is something that, uh, so there was OG whitelist had a uh, kind of the special pricing uh, and then we had a secondary whitelist, but we're just going to merge all the whitelists to have the OG pricing. Uh, this won't change anything in terms of like, there's still going to be 2000 NFT access passes, uh, but this merge is going to give everybody the chance to, to come in at, a, at, a, at the, the entry level pricing because we just want more people to be involved. And, and that's all about, this is the project is all about getting behind Bianca. I see. Um, okay. Uh, and, and I know that there's a little, little something for uh for our youtube uh, uh you know the, for the guys tuning in to our ima tonight uh do you want to do you want to tell it or, or should i uh yeah i mean maybe maybe 
yeah, I guess Bianca doesn't really know. <laughs> so we, we're actually going to out. reveal her. <laughs> Because she's she's given all this input, but she hasn't fi seen the final product. So uh, we're going to give a uh, surprise unveil of her helmet coming for Silverstone. Uh, the real one's not going to be here yet. It's still in painting, but here is like, it's a render uh, image of her helmet. So uh, there you go. And Bianca's put a lot of inspiration behind it. And maybe Bianca can describe it a bit after. Uh, she I talked a lot about it. it. But she hasn't yeah. seen the I so much information. <laughs> yeah, all the all the ideas, <laughs> concepts, colors. Yeah. yeah. So and and again, you know, like because of I think Wi-Fi internet connections, this may be a little bit uh, laggy, uh, uh, YouTube viewers. So uh, bear with us. You will of course see all the video in its all its glory on our socials and Discord. Uh, uh, but uh, in the meantime, let me just share my screen and check this out. It is very beautiful. Cool. Very cool. And I love uh, I love the visor, all the graphics on it. I love the horse at the back. Um, do you want to th first thoughts, Bianca? I mean, so it's what I've always envisioned it. You know, I remember talking to the, the design team and, and like sharing my inspirations and the color palette that I wanted to use and the reason behind it, you know. I've always had my signature orange helmet with me for like the start of my racing career, like when I was six. I've always had that orange, yellow, red tones because I love sunset. It's I think my favorite color. I love, I love the I love how calming it is. I love how it stands out. You know, like whenever you're driving and you see the sunset, you can't not look. It's like you have to take a glance. That's how eye catching it is and how mesmerizing it is. So. I've always just loved it. You know, in the Philippines, we have, I, I used to live um, very close to the, the beach because, you know, the Philippines is very tropical. So I, I, I always watched the sunset and I loved it so, so much. And I guess it's one of the reasons why I had that helmet. And then now the, the idea of the sunset, um, we were in the talks about the dark horse and what color palette we wanted to use. And I was like, maybe this time let's have a change and have a sunrise. And the purple kind of signifies the sky and the ambience. And then there's of course, orange, yellow, and red to signify the sun and, and the sun, and the sun coming up. And I, I love it so much. I love the whole merge. I, I love the other tones, all of it. And, and I love how chromatic it looks and how it blends. And that's the reason why it is, you know, sunrise. And I've, we've also settled with purple because I wanted to show, um, I wanted to show something that symbolizes W series for me because it is me, this opportunity, you know, it, it, it gave me that transition that I could never, I could never thought I would be able to make. And it's very, very, you know, close to my heart. That's why I wanted to add that hint of purple and that shade and, you know, the pink for that academy. So it's everything that I just love, really, you know, it's the sunrise, the sunset and the academy and the W series It's everything that I am very proud of right now. And it's everything that's really, really close to my heart, you know, and and of course, that amazing horse at the back. I just, I just can't wait having people behind. Oh, well, they can't see it, but they can in karting. You know, once people behind you, they get to see the back of your helmet. You know, some people would put um, too slow or, or eat my something and and eat my dust. And no, but I have the horse, so <laughs> I can't wait for people to just to just look at it. You know, when I'm whenever I'm behind or, or whenever they're behind me, and it's amazing. And of course, I have my logo, Bia. I even remember talking with Daryl about that. Name. You know, we just came up with it. You were like. Cause I've never in my life been called Bia, like never. <laughs> I've never even thought of being called Bia and, until Daryl started calling me that. And I was like, oh, I, I kind of like it now. So it's the <laughs> name now, Bia. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, so yeah, I, I love the helmet. I, I, I know you personally, so I know what your favorite colors are. Like, and, and then yes. there's 
there's that sort of Filipino flag coming in there, like oh, some yeah. national colors. I know, Daryl, there's more stuff that you want to talk about in terms of, you know, like benefits. And, and, and so, yeah, what are some of the things that, that we're planning ahead of and, and I guess after the, uh, after the mint? Well, I think that the, the first thing is that there's going to be uh, something really special. So there's going to be uh, an airdrop. Uh, that's going to be for the for 50 people. This is all. This only happens when the the complete um, uh, the complete collection is all the access passes are sold out. But there's going to be a, a airdrop with 50 special um, uh, NFTs, and these are going to be um, of Bianca's helmet. So these will go to uh, 50 people, and they'll actually go into uh, sort of a, a raffle to to get a one, one for one of actual Bianca's helmet. So this helmet is gonna be uh, in the hands of one of the Dark Horse members <laughs> when this, when by the end of the year. So that's gonna be really cool, uh, I think for everyone involved. And then uh, obviously, you know, I think that the, the draw, as I understand, you know, uh, yeah, towards the end of the season, um, obviously, we want all you guys to, to hold on to your NFT passes until then um, uh, to be eligible for a very special uh, helmet. And then also, I, I understand that, you know, alongside the airdrop, you know, with the access passes, we're, we're going to be playing something creatively to make sure that that our members are, are sort of, uh, uh, you know, enjoy holding to our passes and, and have fun with it. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's going to be basically four, four different types, four variants of the NFT. Uh, so there will be four tiers and there's a different kind of um, uh, structure behind it. So 14% of the highest tier, 20% of the second tier, and then uh, 30% and 26%. So it's gonna be a different kind of uh, um, uh, variation of uh, tiers. So that's gonna be quite special. Mm -hmm. and, and the value, like the, the, the access passes themselves are obviously, you know, like the, you know, the variants themselves, like it still represents the same value, right? As, yeah, as they understand. all they all represent the same. They all represent the same value. Uh, there's just going to be uh, different kind of uh, rarities of different designs. So there'll be four different NFTs. Some people might try to collect all four. Um, you know, that's that's definitely quite common. Uh, some people might want to just have, you know, try to try to get the top variant, or some people might try to, you know, just have be happy to have their access pass. But they all have uh, equal access. There's not a difference in, t in terms of that. Once you get your access pass, it'll be um, you know full access to all the rewards and all the all the involvement with with uh, the group. Excellent. I know uh, viewers out there. There's a lot of information to take uh, take in. So obviously, we will be following up a lot of this information on our socials and and on Discord, obviously. Uh, but just to summarize, um, you know, we're merging our OG whitelist and regular whitelist to ensure the momentum of the dark horse and via crew continues to grow. Uh, there will be a reveal. Um, there will be a proper official reveal of uh, Bianca's helmet in real life at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Um, we will be uh, doing a special airdrop uh, to the helmet to uh, 50 random um, uh, uh, TDH holders once the passes are sold out, and finally uh, revealing uh, four variations uh, of, uh, of of the uh, of the of the asset pass. Oh, and also uh, besides the. For the air, besides the airdrop, there's also going to be 50 T-shirts signed by Bianca with the helmet on it. So that's going to be quite right. cool as well. So we're just yeah, working on different, a lot of different merch ideas. Um, we're discussing all the time with Bianca what what kind of ideas we can come up with. Um, there's no pandas being given out yet. Maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a panda NFT later. But I think right now for for now it's just you know having fun and getting everyone together. Um, the uh, the idea is just to to get behind Bianca um, and you know, I'll take her to go with her all the way to the top. And that's where, that's the plan. Thanks Bianca, thanks Daryl. Um, and just a quick shout out uh, to a couple of people who are involved in the helmet design and, and some of the visuals that you guys uh, appreciate and love so much. So quick shout out to Arthur Tam for uh, Bianca's helmet design, Pong Chan for the 3D renders of the video that you just saw just now, Jovi Lim for the awesome photography that uh, you, you've been seeing uh, Bianca uh, post and, and some of our social videos. and. And, and our buddy Lance Chu for our overall creative direction. So, uh, and uh, Brogan, if we could just put the, their socials in the chat as well, so that uh, uh, in case one of some of the members would like to uh, just have a look. And so, yeah, a lot of stuff to, to take in. Um, I think we still I, got I a think, little. 
Wait, I think the most important right now, which is not mentioned, is the white list. Uh, it closes on Monday. So, um, you know, jump in. Um, I know that, it's, you know, blockchain might be quite new. NFTs might, quite, might be quite new. It's actually not as complicated as it sounds. Just jump in and get your MetaMask uh, wallet. Um, get, some, get some ETH and, and please join in and support Bianca. Um, so the special pricing lasts until... I believe uh, end of Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I think Tuesday's the last day of the whitelist. So once that closes, um, it still will be available. Uh, the special pricing is gone, but we're going to be, you know, continually uh, work and growing Bianca's community. People can get, pick up the access pass anytime, and just um, uh, yeah, and just you know, I'd love to see our community grow. Excellent. Thanks, Daryl. Um, We've got time for one question, and I've got a, I've got my myself, I've got a little surprise at the end for all y'all like watching uh, on the YouTube video right now. Thanks so much for sticking around for almost an entire hour. Um, but uh, just one final question for Bianca from uh, Lavella Chius, who asks, "How do you do? You have any advice for young girls around the world?" Um, uh, just I know we've we've talked about this before, but like you know, if they aspire to be a racer an athlete or really anything that um, that they choose to be, what would be your advice for them? I was scared for a moment there. I thought you were going to make me do the panda noise again. <laughs> but but yeah, um, I've been asked this a lot, a lot of times and I, I still can't believe that I actually get to, I hope that I get to inspire young, you know, young, young, young female athletes or people or like kids and, you know, like, it's 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 a tough world that's definitely for sure it's you know it's not meant to be easy the path to whichever you aspire it to be is not it's not smooth like for me i thought that like when i when i came into like the w series shootout i thought that well once i get in oh life's gonna be so good i'm gonna be racing all over the world i'm gonna be traveling i'm, I'm gonna drive i'm gonna be so cool but then <laughs> i get into it and it's so much then I'm just crying myself sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I'm doing so many things that are wrong. I'm messing up. I'm, I, I lose my passport and that doesn't make it easy. And, and it's tough. It's tough as hell. But, but you got to find something in your life to inspire you, whether that be your goal, a goal, a dream, or someone, or your family, your friends, or your special loved ones. You know, it's just something that you can hang, it can hold on to and cling on to whenever it's tough. You know, someone you can talk to, like, like for me, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my CBR media team, for, for Daryl, for my parents, for Adrian, for Naman, and, and everyone. And and it's because I had them when it was just so tough that I was able to push through. And, and you know, it, 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 it takes a village to build a champion. And, it, it, and whenever people ask me, how did I get here? Or, or how do I become like you? It's just so hard trying to tell people that it wasn't, it wasn't just me. It was a whole team backing me up. And now I get to have the dark horse and the BIA crew helping me to reach even greater heights and that's just amazing and you know i and i do hope that i because of this i get to continue paving way in philippine motorsport or women in motorsport or just women empowerment in general you know i, I love to see strong women do strong things you know I, you know i've i've um I came across lots of influential strong and empowered women because of the w series and i take inspiration from them even though you know i and, and now i get it's um it's my opportunity it's my chance to have a voice to inspire young females and to inspire more people and and if there's any advice that i could give it it's that it's find the love in the dark in in a world that's very dark and sad with everything that's going on lately it's it's tough but you, you gotta keep on pushing keep on keeping on and on that note I know that you've got uh, another uh, AMA on Twitter. By the way, viewers, like if you guys want to check out, you want to check out another one of, of our interactions. Uh, we have we've been partnering up with Asiaverse, so that's at Asiaverse, I believe, um, on Twitter. Uh, Bianca will literally be jumping off this 
particular AMA and going on to their next AMA. So if you want to just check that out on Twitter spaces, that would be cool. But thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Bianca, for being here today. It's been a pleasure talking to you both. Um, now, before you go, though, um, and I'm glad you all hung out around here until then, I'm excited to tell you that we, like last time, we have a giveaway competition. So thank you for attending tonight. So this time, we're actually not only you know, giving out a whitelist, we're giving out an actual one free NFT. So the competition rules are similar as last time. We'll be sharing a link uh, of the uh, AMA competition. So Brogan will be doing that on our Discord channel. So if you're not on Discord channel, uh, please, please go on to our YouTube chat, uh, at the chat room to access our Discord link. Um, it's the dark horse. Hopefully that's not too far, hard to find. Um, so jump on, uh, get onto the link, jump on, follow the steps, retweet one of our posts and tag three friends. Um, like last time, we do have a password when you click onto the pre mint uh, link. And the password is obviously Bianca's uh, a race in, in the UK. So the password is Silverstone uh, with a big S. And the competition will, be, uh, will close and be drawn within 24 hours. So make sure right after this AMA, you guys go and click on that link and just be in the hunt for one free NFT. And finally, obviously, we love to hear from you. So please let us know what we can do to make our AMAs even better. Uh, please do within our Discord, please propose all the types of themes and questions and great ideas that you've, you've been sharing already. So just keep us, uh, keep us updated on that and remember to drop us a note. So until then, it's uh, me, TDH Fubu, signing off. And from Bianca, Daryl, Brogan, and myself, Wish you guys a great day, great night, uh, great weekend, wherever you are. Until then, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.